Hi, everybody, and are we all are we all ready? Oh yeah! Welcome back to another episode. This episode of Father Know Something, and what makes this one, everyone, uh, all of them, a little bit unique is um, the preempt stories. So if you notice, I do have new socks. I went on a sock buy yesterday because apparently I had a leak, and my carpet got wet. And I was very busy. Oh my at, God, we got to put the video in. It's at, so funny. Oh, and my carpet is staining. I'm just kind of having a little bit of a meltdown you know, Meltdown about the whole thing. <laughs> you know? And so I put some towels down to, to get the, the water up. And I didn't want to get my feet wet as I was doing it. I was obviously wearing two different socks as I did it because... All these socks are mismatched, and some of them have holes in it. And I said, well, I just got to get through these ones and throw them away. <laughs> and I threw them on. And so you could see my little toesies coming through. And Morgan walked in with Justin, and they were just laughing at me, just first about the socks. We it was so we funny. couldn't stop. He had the socks on that he wore for the engagement episode, so they were kind of wild. And there were holes in both toes. toes. So his toes were sticking out as he's like squishing the carpet. And oh, wait, wait, and I was wearing, I was wearing your... You're wearing my Hoka flip-flops. But it was the stomping motion. Oh, my God. Well, me and Justin are on a gummy, so, like, everything is funny. Oh, God, it was really good. Morgan and I finished, you know, at you know, cutting her stones at the airport, and we uh, were on the way back, and a friend of mine said, you got to stop, and, you know, there's, there's socks on sale at this store. So we went to the store, and I, so I bought, like, a dozen pair of socks, and anyway... <laughs> I still bought What socks it. are you wearing? I'm wearing the Pepsi socks because I always have a reason for wearing a certain sock. Okay. And tonight is in honor of my best one of my best friends, uh, who's a Pepsi bottler. And I wanted him to see that I mentioned him. So to uh putts, as I call him sometimes, uh, I am wearing Pepsi socks on the yeah. show. And Justin, what socks are you wearing? S'more snocks. S'more socks. <laughs> Justin has a love, a obsession. love, love, love obsession. Obsession. Oh my God. He loves s'mores. I think it, obsession goes beyond love. I would agree. Yeah. So yeah. he, so with that, he got the s'mores and I got Morgan Hershey kisses, but apparently she isn't interested in wearing them. I'm wearing <laughs> my boots that I got for over 50% off from the rack. Wow. Very nice. They're very fuzzy and nice. And uh, and now I'm going to teach everyone how to open a bottle of champagne. Okay. Just because. Yeah. Because this is an episode with good vibes. The world is hurting right now. We're hurting. Everyone needs a little bit of a, a lighter episode, I would say. And there's still some some, you know, some stories in there that have some tea, but some drama. Yeah, it's gonna be, you know, all about spreading the love. No seatbelts tonight, Jerry. No seatbelts. No. Nope. Minor, no. minor, but like seatbelts in a way that isn't gonna leave us like shutting it off and being like, Okay, I need a hug. It, it's more like strapping in for a ride around the track. The yeah. Wo the world needs to. And hug. it's a very loose spreading the love theme. Um, we made a lot of shit fit in that box. So get ready. That's true. But in order to safely open champagne, this is a PSA, so people don't blow their eyes out. You should always put your thumb on the top. Okay. That's not fun. Always. Because sometimes if it's in a hot car, they'll just pop off when you get the cage. And then you'll almost take out a professional hockey player's eye and ruin their career. I had a friend almost take out my eye. So bad. So you always hold the cage. Then there's a little twisty. You twist it six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then the cage comes off. It's every single one is six times carefully. Yep. And then just give that cork a light twist. Boom. boom. Magic. You should have shot it. Done. It's half the fun. Well, it's dangerous sometimes. So. Good job. PSA. Sometimes people like to see the thing going. You can. I, you know, if you want to do it, loosen it up to the top right before you feel it's going to go and then let it go. But I don't want to take out anyone's eye. I just, I'm all about safety here in this household. All right, let's do it. Let's go. What 
what's our cheers? What are we cheersing to? We're cheering that we should all be grateful for what we do have in our life and the ones that we love and say a prayer for the people that are having difficulties and for countries that are struggling and for people that are struggling. And hopefully we can get through all this and all be safe and to hopefully do away with murder and death and things that come from wrongful times. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, Jerry, you ready? I am. Morgan? Ready. I think I'm good. Holly? Holly's ready. All right, Jerry, big first one here. I'm ready. Number one. Hello, I have no question. I just wanted to share something to make you smile. I can't wait to hear (laughs) it. I love listening to your podcasts, and I noticed something while I've been binging this one. Normally, my cat ignores all music or voices of my podcast, but not this one. He is in love with the intro. Every time I listen to this one, I have to either hurry up and skip the intro song or play it multiple times. Does he get up and dance? No matter what my cat is doing or where he is, anytime it plays, he runs as fast as he can to my speaker and just sniffs it while the music is playing. Really? He will stare at it for a while after it ends and often whines for me to play it again. It's hard to get a video of it, but once I do, it will definitely be on TikTok for all to see. Thank you so much for the podcast. While I haven't written in for advice myself, a lot of the problems you tackle are things I deal with or have dealt with. Keep up the good work. Much love from Houston. I will say, Houston, that Justin created that song. I have more for you. Yes. (laughs) Ideal outcome. Justin, who I am... 100% assuming made the intro music. Yes. Makes a longer version for my cat. (laughs) Uh, See what you can do. I'm considering, yes. By by the way, what is the cat's name? Don't know. Valuable information we We, should have. We need need to have the cat's name. Don't worry, I have some additional info for you. Okay. The song hypes my cat up. He will be asleep and resting, but as soon as the song plays, he is running around with the zoomies. I'm not sure what is in the song, but he cannot get enough of it. It's funny. That's hilarious. Yeah, we definitely need a video of that. Yeah. I know. I oh love that. It's definitely probably, <laughs> definitely need that. This, I know. This we're gonna, is classic. We're going to reach out and see if uh, they've been able to get a video yet. And if we get it, it'll be hopefully in the YouTube or on our Father Knows Something Instagram. I think it's great. So cute. Something about that song, Jerry. Thank you, Houston. That's a great one. <laughs> Okay, moving along. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Jerry Morgan and Justin. I'm a big fan of y'all and both podcasts. I appreciate the laughs and advice that you've brought to my life. I need a bit of advice to encourage my husband and our living situation. My husband and I do really well for ourselves. We don't make a ton of money, but we both work good jobs. We have a nine-month-old baby girl who I watch as I work from home full-time. She is the sweetest little girl, and we are truly blessed to have her. We live in Colorado, where the cost of living is quite high. I know you all really like Colorado, but my husband and I are discouraged and frustrated with the housing market here. We also really hate snow, lol. So we are constantly throwing around the idea of staying in Colorado or moving somewhere more affordable slash somewhere that could let us have what we want. Because my job can be moved anywhere, as it is remote as mentioned, my husband has applied to many jobs in many other areas that have a lower cost of living. He recently received two more rejection emails from jobs he is more than qualified for. This seems to be a trend. He applies to jobs and then does not get an offer even though he is plenty qualified, if not overqualified. So here's where I need a little advice. While I am quite disappointed in the fact that we will not be moving in the near future, I really try not to express how disappointed I am when talking to my husband because I do not want to make him feel like he has failed or is failing our family. He is absolutely not, and he provides for us really well. How could I show him that he is appreciated? Do you have suggestions on ways to show that aren't super cheesy, that I could remind him how important he is to me and our daughter? Sometimes the simplest things are the best. And little things... Um, that you do, he'll get it. 
you don't have to do the you don't have to do the grand the grand hurrah but it's just the constant little things where you just can simply even just tell him i really love you you know you i mean make him a special cake <laughs> i mean a, a simple ice cream cake or something that he likes and just you know when when you give to him say i just want you to know that you have fulfilled my life more than I've ever thought I would be fulfilled. And that is something that goes a long way. And it doesn't add any more stress to you guys. It doesn't take anything out of your pocketbook to do it. It's simply about love. I've always told my kids, don't go out and buy me cards. Take your fingers, go get paint, <laughs> find, find something and put a handprint on a piece of paper and write something in mud. I mean, the... <laughs> It doesn't take a lot to, 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 to make someone feel that you really mean something to them. And all the other stuff, you know, really is, is superficial. It's, it's the classic things that you can create on your own that don't cost anything, but you took the time and, and, and the mindset to do it, which means everything. It really does. I mean, I do things for, for my kids you know, just because I love them and it may take effort to do it. It may take time out of my day to do it. Morgan and I just spent four days. And three, Justin was there for Justin, two. Justin was there too. Cutting stone you know, tiles for, for Justin's new shower. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it. that's how I tell my kids I love them. I'm there. I show up. And... Being here for you just to talk to you, I think that you guys all get the fact that it's the the giving of yourself. And so don't worry about buying a watch. Don't worry about... Socks are kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but don't go don't go crazy it doesn't it's, have it, to be a lot monetarily no, either it, it's really about the the simple thing the thought and just the words and your and what's in your eyes when you say it uh that reaches home what's been like one of the most fun low-cost date night ideas you've you've had low-cost date nights yeah because i hear this you, and i'm like do some fun date nights just quality I, time as a couple i mean i've i've certainly enjoyed going to hear music sitting on the grass bringing a bottle of wine and just hang out together is great mm -hmm. um the beach i mean i've done love stuff, beach dates you know just things that really don't involve stress just relaxation and not that you have to prepare to go do it, because once you start having to get things together, go do it, again, that's stress. It's just, it's got to be easy. It's just got to be simple. We get there, we have our blanket and lay, lay on the grass and just enjoy whatever it might be. I'll tell you what is stressful. Tell me. Planning a proposal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I've always been someone that loves the little things mm -hmm. way over anything else. Me too. And I think, honestly, your first answer, cake or not, just telling someone that mm -hmm. is, uh, I don't even remember if it was a, a study or a story or something. Mm -hmm. And it just showed, maybe it was just a really good conversation I had one time, but if you just simply say you appreciate someone mm -hmm. or what they do or just you know, not right when they do something for you, but just out of the blue one day, mm -hmm. you just say, hey, I really appreciate everything you do for me and and however you mm -hmm. want to expand on that. It goes way further than anything else. You ever heard you ever heard me describe the sugar pile? No, well, we've all heard the sugar pile. I think I think we have, yes. Yeah, we're good. There. I'll keep the sugar pile full. Yeah, I think um a little card with your your little one's handprint and you want to throw yours in there too. Some nice words of affirmation. I appreciate everything. And a date night, whether that's tea, coffee, a bottle of wine, going to a scenic view. I mean, Colorado's got a few of them. And my favorite thing, hot springs, man. Nice little date night at a hot spring. Whew. That yeah, sounds, well, that sounds good. I mean, some of our favorite moments, I think, are 
where we just do go throw the blanket down on the beach and just oh sit there. Oh my God, yeah. Or just random things like that where it's, mm -hmm. you're not going to an event, you're not going out, you don't, you don't really have no to get ready. There's no plans or expectations. Mm -hmm. And, but we're also that type of people where we just will find opportunities and just kind of, we're adventurous, I guess, a little bit that way. But you don't even have to go that far. It doesn't even have to get that complicated. I, I know that, you know, I have my hobbies. You know, my, 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 my place where it is my, you know, comfort zone, the hangar. And when you guys say, I'm going to come to the hangar, I love it. We that, used to come sit there a lot. Yeah. I, that to me was, you know, heaven on earth where we can just go somewhere. I can get go into a, you know, a putzing around mode and <laughs> yeah. you guys, if you guys want to chime in and help, it's, it's just, it's, it's participating together. Yeah. And I like that. Yeah. So I hope that helped. Yeah. That and listeners, chime in with some amazing ideas. I feel like this is going to be a really fun one for everyone to yeah. also come up with some stuff for. Mm -hmm. One of this week's partners is KiwiCo. When you give KiwiCo, it's so much more than just a box of toys or random activities for your kid to do. It's the gift of discovery through actual hands-on experiences, and it's giving the kiddos the tools to learn about topics that they actually love, whether that's dinosaurs, rocket ships, art, KiwiCo has everything. When we went back home to Minnesota recently, we played with an amazing science kit from KiwiCo with my niece and nephew. And my sister-in-law said firsthand, this is the most engaged and excited she's seen them with something in a long time, especially something that's not a screen. And KiwiCo creates these kits that are fun and stress-free, so you get to enjoy the quality time without all the hard prep work or stress planning. And these are tested and approved by kids, so you know that yours are going to love them. There's something for kids of all ages, from infants and preschoolers to teens and beyond. Yeah, seriously, ages zero to 100. And for little babies, they have amazing sensory mats, which is so important to start them on early. Discover hands-on fun with KiwiCo. Get your first month free on any crate line at kiwico.com slash FKS. That's your first month free at K-I-W-I-C-O dot com slash fks okay up next justin you got this one number three mm -hmm. hi father knows something team hi i love the show and two hot takes hey. and have been listening since the beginning on to my problem i female 22 and my boyfriend male 22 have been dating a little over two and a half years I'd like to say we communicate well, but recently I feel like I've been lacking on my end. I have this problem where when I'm faced with conflict, I go silent and don't know how to proceed. Also, if I'm the one who's in the wrong, it's hard for me to actually apologize in person, and so I end up apologizing over text. I feel really bad about this because I feel like most times when he's in the wrong, he's always very good at owning up to it and apologizing to me in person. But when I'm faced with the conflict, I can't do the same for him. I feel like my inability to face this conflict head on and to apologize stems from my parents raising me without apologizing much and doing apologies through nice acts instead of owning up to anything. I feel him getting actively more upset with each failed apology and I'm not sure how to get myself out of this shut down headspace when our arguments happen. I just want to be a better partner and be able to give him the apologies he deserves. I wish I had a way or a tool for you <laughs> um, because you really do feel it. Once, once you just own up to it and you recognize the problem, it means the world to them as well that we can move forward. What happens when you don't do this and you don't recognize it or you don't accept it and don't make the change, whatever that is regarding, re, re, regarding it, is that it starts to become uh, a crusty layer. And before you know it, it's so thick that you, it's, it only brings bitterness and you have a dysfunctional machine, your love. Um, Morgan and I were, were using a machine that was caking up with the debris from what we were doing and overnight it got dry and it took a lot of water and a lot of water pressure to go blast that stuff off to get that thing clean. That's your love. Let's use a metaphor. Okay. 
you're you're caking it up or it's getting crusty you it's not healing it's just getting deeper and thicker and it's going to cause a barrier that you can't penetrate and your your relationship could suffer from this so i hope that you will find it more important in the strength the inner strength to just say wow i'm i'm sorry i recognize it I see how it happened, and I'm going to really do my best not to have these triggers or whatever it is that makes me do this so we can grow from it. Um, that's what I would, would hope that you can do. I can't offer you anything else because I do know that you recognize the fact that you need to do it. You're just going to have to really be more disciplined and, and weigh it out and say, what is going to be so hard about this? Because once you do it, it's going to be easy. It, it, it's over with. And you're, you're going to have relief. So mm -hmm. once you do it a few times and you train yourself to do it, you'll get out of that bad habit and you'll grow. And whatever effect you had from your parents on, regarding this will long be in the rearview mirror and you'll be going forward in life. Yeah, I feel like apologies are almost like like muscles. Like if you haven't done it a lot or haven't had to work that muscle, it can mm -hmm. be hard. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if this is something you, like, weren't accustomed to and you're in the fight, you're in this heat of the moment, your nervous sy system could be kind of fried, could be overwhelming, it's okay to just be like, hey, I need a moment. I want to, you know, respond to this accordingly. I want to make sure I'm hearing you. I just need a moment. It's okay to do that. You don't have to be so overwhelmed. You shut down and go mute. And I think... A lot of times we build up like these grand apologies in our heads and it doesn't need to be that like I'm sorry goes so far for so many people. And if that's all it is and like it's got to be heartfelt, though, it's got to yes. be real. Well, and our writer definitely knows that this is an issue. And I think that's why this is kind of just down to the, like the spreading the love like you love him. Your problem is not gonna you know don't let it be this world war that takes you down it's you two versus the problem not you two versus each other mm -hmm. so just recognizing that and in the moment like hey i'm sorry i love you like let's let's take a minute to you know both process both hear each other and then let's come back to this especially if you're getting flooded and overwhelmed like if you need a break during these big heated conversations or fights like that's okay to take a pause, but just keep communicating with him and spreading the love. Yeah, I mean, I'd be concerned if you have big, crazy conversations all the time that are conflict. But um, I think you have a really big opportunity here to not only grow in your relationship, but grow as an individual because it's really simple, the answer. And it's really, you just got to do it. Mm -hmm. You just do it one time. And it gets from easier. there, it's a snowball effect. Yep. But it's, your partner really should be your safe space. It should not, the your partner should be the easiest person in the world to apologize to. Mm -hmm. And I think once you just break that barrier down, I mean, we can sit and give reasons for why we think it's happening, but it doesn't matter unless you just, try it and do it and break that barrier because you know a great first step would be to apologize for something small but I do think if we're looking at the relationship I think you need to address all of the times where you wanted to do it in person and explain maybe you have maybe you haven't um, kind of what you've detailed here for us of what your struggle is and where you think it's coming from and you want to be better, you want to get to the point where you can do this because maybe that's also not being communicated. Mm -hmm. And if you get that across and say, hey, I have had a hard time with this. I do sincerely apologize for all of these things. I want to move forward and really try to be better at this. Then that shows that you're trying and you can't fault someone for trying to fix something that they've had an issue with. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, if you can't, 
then I, I worry for your relationship and for you kind of long term. Yeah, well, and they are two and a half years in. Like, they're out of that honeymoon phase by a year and a half. Like, I feel like the two and a half, three-year mark is when you really start, like, getting into it. And sometimes there's that three-year itch. And, you know, you just got to work through it. And uh, There was a show years ago called Happy Days, and the Fonz had a real uh, problem saying that I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, the words couldn't get, get out of your mouth. So it it might have been cute with the funds, but it's not cute in a relationship. And if you really find that you can't do it, then maybe you need to go seek some counseling that maybe they can address why and how and the tools on how to get past this. Because mm-hmm. obviously you don't want to lose your relationship over this. Absolutely. Especially if you want this relationship. Yeah. But you'll find that if you can't do it with this one, you may not be able to do it with any of them. So you, you better... Better. I'm glad you're you're asking the question. I'm yeah. glad you're seeking the assistance. And if we didn't give you the tool to do it, or therapy is the, a great idea. Therapy is your yeah. Next a bet. therapist might have some the amazing answer. tools to slowly dip your feet in the water of apologies. Yeah. Well, and what I like about this one, and the reason it fits into this theme, is we have someone coming to us saying, "I know I'm in the wrong. Right. I want to fix this. How do I do it?" Well. The, the first thing that you just did is that you said those words to us. Aim, aim, look look at the guy you're in love with and say the same words, and yeah. you're, you're halfway there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the next one. Another one of this week's partners is Babel. We just read a story about someone making fun of their wife that's trilingual, which was kind of ironic, considering only 22% of Americans speak a language other than English at home. And if you're like me and you want to beat the odds and learn a new language, Babbel is going to be your best friend. Because with Babbel, you can start speaking a new language in just three weeks, especially because Babbel's lessons are designed for real-life conversations. And they were designed by over 150 language experts. So there's no need to pay for an expensive private tutor. There's even studies from Yale and Michigan State. And one study found that using Babbel for 15 hours is equivalent to a full semester at college. I also really love the games. I feel like it's a great way to help me with retention on what I just learned in the previous lessons or podcast. And Babbel even has live classes. So no matter how you learn, Babbel has something to accommodate you. If you're ready to try it for yourself, here's a special limited time deal for our listeners to get you started right now. Get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash FKS. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash FKS, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash FKS. Rules and restrictions may apply. What number? Three. Eh. Four. Hey. I slept with a good friend of 11 years, and now I'm not really sure what to do. I, female 24, and friend, male 24, have been friends for 11 years and have had feelings on and off for each other throughout that time, but nothing ever came of those feelings. I was in a relationship throughout the majority of our friendship up until a couple of months ago. Yep, I recently ended an eight-year relationship, long distance, for the last year. Shortly after ending that, I went on a float trip with 24 male and our friends. We have the same group of friends at home, and they have all been rooting for us to get together. Well, we ended up sleeping together when we got back from the float trip, and it was great. Everything felt so natural and so comfortable with him. As dumb as it sounds, it just felt right. We ended up planning a trip for him to come visit me about two months after that, and all of that went super great. But the day he left, he asked me to be his girlfriend. First, I said yes, since it was just a bit out of the blue when he asked, but I took a moment to step back and tell him I wasn't quite ready to be in a relationship yet, but that I really like what we have going and the connection we have. Sounds familiar. Are you having flashbacks? Holy shit. yep. He seemed to be really understanding and say, let's just take it slow then. But he had also mentioned that for him, a long distance would work really well with as busy as he is with work. But I just went through long distance and it sucked. And it's not something I planned on doing again, at least not to start a relationship. I'm trying to figure out how to best tell him I want to be single and have the opportunity to meet people where I live if there is ever someone here that I end up meeting. 
But I also don't want him to think I'm just sleeping slash dating around because that's not really the point I'm at right now. I truly love being able to be single and not be tied down for the first time in a long time. Part of me just doesn't want to be in a relationship and I want to stay single for a while, but I also don't want to lose something good with him. I'm also worried about ruining our friendship if things do fall through. Just not really sure what to do, especially knowing he is wanting to take a step further, but I'm not quite there yet. Well, I got you know my answer, but you guys had something that hit home here. Do you guys want to tackle it? Or you want me to go first? You can go first. So I always believe in the organic. I was about to say the orgasmic, but I'll go with the orga- <laughs> the organic method, and maybe the orgasmic works as well. Orgasmic is good. <laughs> um, but. You know, you guys have been friends for 11 years. 11 years, yeah. Nothing's going anywhere. So I think that you really just say, you know something, I'm, it, it is amazing where we are and how we got here. And as I just got out of the relationship, I'm not sure what I want to do, where we want to go, but I do know I enjoy, just like you said, I enjoy what we have and I enjoy this beginning. Let's just take it organically and see where we go. And, you know, I'm not saying I'm committed to you. You're committed to me or I'm committed to you. I know that I really like what we're experiencing. And I hope that will work enough for for us right now. Let's let's just see where we are. Because obviously we're going to have, if if we find that we really do need to spend time together, we're going to have to make some changes. And I'm not ready to do that yet. So let's just Go that direction. And that's where I would leave it. And your your friendship, as long as you're going organically, it's already set up that if it doesn't work out as a romantic, that you guys remain your friendship. We we tried it. We were there. And now we're moving forward. Because it's got to work for both of you. Yeah, I think um, I think you can get back to a friendship, but I think it'll take some time because you know those feelings when – something new is happening and you kind of break that barrier. Mm -hmm. You go from friends to something more. And I'm the only way I'm relating is if Morgan had said yes, initially. So let's, let's give people if they don't know know. the the backstory. Oh, they know. Well, I don't know. Let's, let's say it again. Morgan said no the first time I asked her. Okay. And it was like, oh, I just love being single. I'm not ready yet. It's kind of the whole same script here. Yeah. Same script. I just wasn't ready. I was in the same boat. I was nervous about getting into a relationship. I liked my freedom at that time. And I... I know you still talk about missing being single. (laughs) Being single is fun. I just like, I love you. We all miss it. I'm really excited about (laughs) being engaged. But no, I just think there's 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 something about being young in your twenties and single. I hope you guys all watched my face on this where it was like <laughs> No. But I'm just saying, like this person was in a relationship for eight years. Like mm-hmm. they're getting out, they're finding themselves. They're, right. So it's not you as know, Right, but there's also been this. There's also been a connection going on for quite a while with these people in denial. But but it, there's been something the there. The chemistry is there for sure. Absolutely. And so so what my thought was is when you say yes, and it's like everything is just speeding up and going up and up. When you come back and say, "Yeah, just kidding," um, I thought about it, and I I really want to just stay single, and I don't really want to do long distance, and. And this and that, that's going to hit and that's going to hurt for a while on his end. Though I do, after 11 years, believe you can get back to a solid friendship. It's going to take a a little bit. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. She's not saying I want to be just friends. But she's, I think I really nailed it when I said it. Let's just take it day by day and take it organically and see what happens. But Yeah, but when someone says I'm enjoying being single and I want to really try and meet people in my area... They don't want to be in a relationship with you. I have some more context. So ideal outcome, hmm, not really sure. I would love to keep what we have going just without a label for a while and no hurt feelings. Additional, 
We live 12 hours apart, and he recently got a great offer from his job if he stays longer. So he would be there for at least another two years, and I know I am not moving back home. Also, on a totally different note, this guy's name came up in my relationship with my long-term ex, and I made it clear that I had no feelings for this guy, even though I knew I did. So I am scared of hurting my ex's feelings if anything more were to come of this. Nothing ever happened between this guy and I until I was out of my relationship, but I'm a little nervous it won't be perceived that way. So there is a lot of me that doesn't want to take any next steps yet because I don't want to feel judged by others in my life or mm. feeling like I am doing something wrong. I get it. And, well, don't keep lying. But, but I but I do have a feeling there's something still going on. If she really gives a shit what her ex has to mm -hmm. say, think about it. There is there is a tie still there. She's not quite done yet. She's you know, not ready for... You she, know, no. Some people, like myself, yeah. we're just people pleasers. And you overanalyze and you overthink a lot of things. And you could be worried that it's going to soil your name and people are going to assume there was something before when there wasn't. I, I get that. We live in a very talk shit world and it could just be fear of it, public perception. Well, the truth is the truth. And at this point in time, she's went, she spent time with this guy. She was able to hook up with him. She was able to experience some amazing feelings and she's going to digest now the amazing feelings she's experienced with him to the amazing feelings she had with the guy from eight years and try to decide what else is, you know, she, what, where her heart really is. So give her the space to do it. Let I'm, it I'm with you. I think for me, if I wouldn't have said no to Justin initially asking me, mm -hmm. and if I wouldn't have had other experiences, I don't know if we'd be where we are. Like it, really took me being with him, getting to know him, falling for him, and then like hanging out with someone else and spending time with them. And I was like, oh my God, this is, this sucks. This my, is terrible. My best friend's girlfriend. This is just <laughs> brutal. I was like, I have it so good over here. What am I doing? My best friend's girlfriend. <laughs> and so that really like, I needed that. And I think this person does need some time, like an eight-year relationship mm -hmm. to now jumping into what could be her person, mm -hmm. which I'm rooting for you. This is just a cute rom-com in the making. Yeah. So I think it is fair, especially with the 12 hours apart. Take it slow. See it's fair. Each, see each other as much as you can. It's fair. I'm just saying it's hard. It's going to be hard to get back to your normal friendship again well yeah because he wants to be with her it's Listen, it's tough take it organically and see what happens see what weathers the storm look it it's you can't you can't control destiny if it's destined to happen it's gonna happen if i think it, i think you gotta you gotta spread the love a little bit sow your wild oats a little bit i she may not want i mean she may meet people and, and just say you know something i really just I'll wait till he comes back. I love when I'm with him. It's going to be the the Justin effect. I it, just know it. She's going to hook up with other people and be like, "Damn, that sucked." Just just let it let it let it let it play its organic path. <laughs> Don't worry about this. Just Are you okay? <laughs> I think we should make that a dictionary term, the Justin effect. I like the sound of that. <laughs> But it specifically like relates to me. I really am enjoying this. I'm really enjoying my uh, over my left shoulder. <laughs> it's, it's it's it all fun. worked out. Anyways, far as you far, <laughs> far as our op, I think have the conversation like that I did that I said. Yeah, throw just, in the word organic a couple few times. <laughs> yeah, organic. <laughs> organic. Well, orgasmic. <laughs> I think that might really conflict him. Let's stick to organic. Let's just take it organically. You got to have fun with it. You know, um, you got to have fun with it. I did see someone in the comments one time, like if you took a shot every time Jerry said organic, you'd be dead. <laughs> <laughs> We'll have, to, we'll have to try that one night. That's not, not this tonight. episode alone. We'd, we'd put a lot of people in the hospital. Do <laughs> not try at home. No, no, me. Just make me do a shot every time <laughs> I say it. That would be... That would be interesting That'd since be, I never do shots. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. It would not be good. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. I think we all have had times in our life where we know the answer and know what we need to do, but maybe don't have the tools or mental strength to do it, which is where therapy can come in. Therapy helps you figure out what's holding you back so you can work with yourself instead of against yourself. Therapy for me has been so valuable in the past. It has taught me some amazing coping skills that I just didn't have. And so I was not equipped to deal with a lot of the stress and burnout that I was encountering. I think one of those tools you don't really think about often is the motivation to have tough conversations, to set the boundary, to do whatever you need to do can also be a big part of it. And that's where therapy can really help. It gives you all of these tools and prepares you for those tough convos or maybe even helps your brain just not self-sabotage as much. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. And one thing I appreciate about BetterHelp is that you can switch therapists at anytime for no additional charge. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash FKS today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash FKS. Getting right into it. Okay. Sexless relationship after five years of dating. Hi, Jerry, Justin, and Morgan. I, 27 female, have been with my partner, 35 male, for about five years now, and we have maybe had sex a total of five times in the last two years. Hmm. We love each other, have great communication, and know we are 100% for each other. I can't see me spending my life with anybody else. While our relationship is great and communication is good, our sex life is, well, non-existent. We talk about it too. We're both still attracted to each other, make time for date night and snuggle. However, when it comes to actually being intimate, we can't lean into the awkwardness of it. We just don't. It's like we are both embarrassed with our bodies or something. I want to recommend going to a sex shop, but I know he will be uncomfortable. It's like he's scared he's going to hurt me. Any advice on how I can bring back intimacy with my partner? Ideal outcome, to bring back intimacy in a non-awkward way, even add some spice like toys in the mix. Additional info, we both lost a lot of weight recently, about 100 pounds collectively. That was our hang up about a year ago. We thought our weight was the problem because we were so unhappy with our bodies, but now we're both confident in our bodies. Yeah. Well, first of all, going to a sex shop and worrying about him being... Uh, embarrassed, you can do it online. You don't have to go to a shop. That would be a fun True. little date night. Get some some cocktails, alcoholic or not. Go shopping online. Go shop. Sex toys are always kind of awkward. I think like no yeah, matter. Yeah, that's what's fun about it. It does add to kind of like the like the <laughs> sneakiness <laughs> in the you? aisles. Well, and especially like, when ever like there's a lot of people there. You look around. You're like, well, mm, and, what are they and, getting? I know. <laughs> so fun and you can be even clever once you see something that you think you may like you can certainly go on to Pornhub or something and see that toy see that toy being used you have some of your toys that you brought in today you gotta kind of go to the community section of Pornhub though because the professionally filmed stuff is very unrealistic and then just search on the community tab but if you actually look at the device there's anal beads there's certain stuff out there that will show that that device even maybe from the manufacturer being utilized so there is stuff sounds, out there. Sounds like you've tried this. I've tab. done this. Oh, Can I God, tell you yeah. one thing I've never Absolutely. seen on there ever? What's that? A chin dildo with really? headlamp. Well, I can really tell you that uh, we will have to get that and tell the story again, or make them go find that story on the original Too just, Hot Tapes. Why don't you just tell but us? Was it an actual chin dildo, or did you make it a chin dildo? No, it was the headlight. She. I brought her the. What are the headlights for? <laughs> To see up her <laughs> when you're in there. <laughs> it was a joke. He walked in today. This was unprompted. <laughs> he walked in the studio today, you guys, literally with the lights just on, ready to go. <laughs> Unsure what he thought he was coming to today, but I was just being funny. Yeah. Those are very useful though, outside of the bedroom. No, also. no, I don't use them really in the bedroom. These are really used when I'm Digging in something like, you know, in the airplane or in the car where not, I have to go be seen. Or cutting tile in the darkness. Cutting tile in the darkness, yeah. <laughs> that, would have been, that would have been helpful. Anyway. I think the online shopping is an amazing idea mm -hmm. and like make it kind of fun. And honestly, 
if you need some liquid courage or maybe a gummy, the CBD gummies we have, like the, those are next level. And I don't know if you've actually, and you know, sometimes the, maybe a sex therapist, but basically what you really need to do is find That'd a way be great. to be honest and comfortable to say what you like. Sometimes even masturbating with one another to show each other what you like and what, what, what really, where your spots are. It helps. I mean, I would say sex is in my head easier than masturbating on your own in front of someone. I think we got to get them to fuck first. Well, it, you just want what I'm. What I'm really trying to say is, you got to be open and really demonstrate or share what you like. And yeah. I don't. I mean, if they're inhibited in any way, shape, or form with one another, that is part of the problem. And I don't know if that is the problem. Yeah. I mean, it could just be that they burned the candle out of both in, you know, they they met each other, they were they had sex day and night for the first three months and they burnt the wick from both ends and you know, it it's gone. I I, I can't tell you. I think like I think um, uh, some of the nice times we've had where we've been really vulnerable with people is like card games. And I think that could be a really fun way to like start having a conversation of like what's a kink that I don't know about or things like that. And like, I don't know if there is like a sex truth or dare like card game, or you could both say, Hey, let's each write 10 questions related to sex, put them in a hat, start drawing them. Mm -hmm. That could be a fun date night. But I think it's like, it kind of, when you f fall into a rut of like not doing something, it is kind of like nerve wracking or scary to get back on the horse. Mm -hmm. You're like, I don't know. Did I did I forget to ride the bike? Did just I like can I ride the bike? Mm -hmm. Just like apologizing. Yeah, can be hard. So you know, I, I I do know one thing. The answer to everything is on the fucking internet. <laughs> really. oh, I thought you were going to say is a threesome. No. <laughs> Look, I I've been down that road, and that wasn't <laughs> the most exciting thing in my life. So. <laughs> You know, being with us, being with a person that you're in love with, that you trust and that you care for will beat a threesome any day of the week and twice on Sunday. So take a trip to twice to your Sunday. local sex shop. It'll be it's it is awkward, but it is it could be really fun, especially yeah. when you go with your girlfriend's older brother. That was weird. You went with Matthew? Me, yeah. Justin, and Matt in Duluth. <laughs> <laughs> we went to Pure Pleasure. I don't know why. The person working there definitely, I just, I, it was weird. I think I had to pee mostly. I grew up with my next door neighbors owned adult bookstores and um, was introduced to toys very young in my life, probably 14 or 15 when I saw what, what they would bring home. <laughs> and, you know, that was 50, 50 some odd years ago, you know, 50 years ago. And their son I'm friends with today, and he has his own, built his own business in the Atlanta, I think it's further than the Atlanta, Georgia area. But I walked into his store and I said, wow, this guy is a merchandiser. And <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, couldn't believe it. I mean, I mean, I, cause I thought I've seen everything that's, you know, online. Yeah. But I will tell you that he has done a most amazing job marketing, marketing. And I, I think it's called, I'm not even sure the name, it's Tokyo something. I have to ask him, I'll have to go post it. Mm. This is in Atlanta? It's in Atlanta. Sex shop? It's a sex shop. Okay. Mm. Tokyo, if, look up, look up uh, adult store, Atlanta, Tokyo. Tokyo Valentino Erotic? That's it, that's it. Tokyo Valentino Erotic. It's but, quite the name. But an amazing, I mean, inventory, you can find anything there. So, I mean, I'm not saying there's not other places in the country like it, but I... Oh, his website's pretty good. There's a, there's a lot of... Wow, that's a big store. No, it's huge. I mean, he is, if it's anything to do with, with pleasure or sexual pleasure... It, it, it's on that block and he owns a building that houses it. There's literally a quote on the website that says best crazy date night. So, Oh, there you go. I think that's your next date night. Just get over the embarrassment and go to the sex shop. <laughs> Take a trip to Atlanta, Georgia. No, there's local <laughs> ones, but you know, sp spread the love. 
Spread the love. Spread the love. There you go. Okay. One last one for us. Can't wait to hear it. What is that, number six? That was, uh, that was five. So this would be six. This is six. Wow. New record. Okay. That's a cute one. Okay. It's, it's meant to like bring some nostalgia and bring us back a little. Okay. Hi, Jerry, Morgan, and Justin. I love the podcast and the fatherly advice is always so comforting. Thank you for being my third dad. Let's get to it. You can call me D. I'm under 18 and I use he, him pronouns. My girlfriend, M, is also under 18 and uses she, her pronouns. M and I have been dating for three months and I love her so, so much. She's the smartest, most gorgeous, and funny person that I have ever met, and I'm so incredibly lucky to have her. But here's my incredibly wholesome problem. We haven't kissed yet. Though I've had relationships in the past, I've never kissed anyone at all. M has. Every time I see her, I just want to kiss her so bad. Her lips are always chapped, and it's the cutest thing. Even though I really want to, and we've talked about it many times before, I don't know the first thing about how to initiate a kiss. I've kind of tried before, but there's always been something getting in the way. Her dog, her allergies, my nerves, etc. She's mentioned wanting to make it perfect and wanting it to happen on a beach at sunset. It's very rom-com-esque. I really want to make that happen for her, but the sun sets really late here and we wouldn't be able to stay out that late. I'm also worried. Where are they in Alaska? <laughs> <laughs> I'm also worried that I won't be as good as the people she's kissed before me, and she won't want to do it again after. I'm so sorry if this doesn't make sense. I'm just a hopeless romantic. Oh, uh, it's in all a risk of a perfect first kiss with my perfect girlfriend. We all have the risk of the first kiss. I love you all so much, and you've helped me through some incredibly hard times. Thank you so much for reading, and have a wonderful day slash night slash afternoon slash anything else. D. D, my suggestion is go in 75 or 80%, and when they are ready and they see that you're there, make sure that they come the other 20. Are you taking a line from the Hitch movie? I think it's 90-10, Jerry. Yeah, it's 90-10. It's from Hitch. With Albert Brenneman. Well, I'm glad you knew it. Yeah. But that's it. It's a good movie. That's really, I'm going going almost for all of it, but you got to let them come to you. And if that's where it will all happen. What if she goes the 90%? Then he can go in the 10. Then even easier. Then he gets (laughs) to go in the other 10. But but go in easy. Don't go in for, don't go in like a wild banshee. Do you, God, can you remember your first kiss and how? I do. I do. Oh my God. Let's hear about it. How did it go? Did you teeth her? No. No. It was great. You met, well, you didn't meet him, but you saw him at uh, your friend's wedding. I told you about him. Remember? Oh, kind of, yeah. I was like, that is literally, what is he doing here? That was my first kiss in eighth grade. Yeah. I don't remember what age mine was. That's how small I think mine must have been younger. Minnesota is. It was at um, a classic like party mm-hmm. at this really big house, and did you I play think spin the bottle? Were, no, it just happened. It just happened. A lot of times, you can build it up to be this huge thing, this huge moment, and really, a lot of times, it would be me walking out, walk them out to get their cab, and just simply. Kind of as you go for the hug goodbye, which always happens, then you just lean in. And most of the time, it just happens. But when I was going for my first, first kiss ever, Mm -hmm. I like the one at the party kind of was just like, it just happened. That wasn't like this moment. But for the first time, I was dating someone, I was into it, and I was like, I don't want to screw this up. Ended up walking down the driveway behind her car, standing there for a second, and it got super awkward because we both knew, (laughs) right? And I'm picturing you setting this up with the sunset, or even if it's not, something similar. And you both know it's about to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's when it's one of those moments where you got to just not think and just do. And you just lean in and go for it. The first one's always- That one's out of Maverick. Don't think, just do. Okay, cool. But the first thing is always, <laughs> the first one's always 
going to be awkward no matter what you do. And you cannot worry about what they're going to think of it. Because in my position, I was also with, it was my first kiss ever, but she had dated someone else before. Mm -hmm. And so I knew like, I'm the, you know, I'm new in this game and I'm going in with someone who's experienced. And at the end of the day, they're just interested in you. They're going to be excited about whatever. And you get better as you go. Well, does she know that yeah. he's never kissed a woman before? I would assume. Probably. They've talked, yeah. Yeah, so I would, you know, just, she'll be gentle. It's okay if you teeth her. It's okay. I, I, I mean, teeth. I remember. Teeth. I had braces, I think, still my first kiss, or maybe I'd just gotten them off, but I just sometimes, like, you go in too fast and you just clunk teeth. That's not happened to anyone? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> <laughs> How fast are you going? Like you that's panic. not the ninety ten. I, ju I oh just, my God, you just I just said to him, go in easy. <laughs> go in easy. Not everyone gets that that lucky. Go in easy. No, it's, it's it's gonna be good. And hey, it's, it's kind of like when the you know, kind of like when the Apollo, you know, docks with the lunar lander. You go in easy. Kissing is a very interesting you thing. You go into I've always you felt, go into soft dock. It's weird. Like I've always felt like you don't see any other species really going in to like meet mouths. Oh, I'm curious now. You know, like any isn't other... it just kind of a weird concept? I, I will tell you this. It, <gasps> at, the, at the end of the day. Many animals actually do engage in kissing behaviors to show affection. It's just Doggies. an interesting concept. I, I, I will share this with you. It, 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 it will either be magic or it won't. Oh, it'll be magic. One animal kisses just like we do, the bonobo ape. Elephants have different methods. They'll put their trunks in each other's mouths. That's so cute. See, like, we we almost do a Ford. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Next story, Justin. End this. <laughs> <laughs> So unhinged. Oh. <laughs> Look, you told me to be me. <laughs> this is the show that I can do it. <laughs> that was good. That was quick. That was, that was really good. Guys, I, I have to tell you that 99.99% <laughs> of our show, our stories are so, so sensitive that I really give you guys respect that you're... <laughs> That you are my kids, and I really want to help and you know be a good ear and not make fun of your situations. But in this one, I'm sorry, it, it brings out it brings out the real me. <laughs> <laughs> well, to pull it back in, our advice is just go for it. Yes, yes, yes. Go, just go for it. Spread the love. Just kiss. There you, there you are. It won't. It's going to be your first, but it won't be your last. And they get better with time. All your emotion, all your feelings will be there. And if she has the emotions and the feelings, it's going to happen. It'll be, it's gonna it'll be, be fine. It'll be good. It'll be fine. So, Jerry. <laughs> yes. To round this one out on a more serious note. Oh, yeah. gosh. Part of spreading Reeled the in. love is to receive love back. Mm -hmm. And so I want to read this one. Okay. Hi, Jerry, Justin, and Morgan. I've been listening nonstop for months now, catching up on all the old episodes of Father Knows and THT. I just want to say thank you. I started off looking for any and all Reddit story videos, but got locked on your fatherly advice and the family love between all of you, even guests who are friends. My mom suffered from alcoholism and bipolar schizophrenia growing up. I love my dad to bits, but as an adult, I understand the rock and a hard place he was put in between the woman he loves and her mental health. We have a good relationship these days for my kids, their grandkids, but I could never have the open conversations with them you all have with each other. I listened to your videos in the labor and delivery August 22nd after welcoming our son into the world. The nurses absolutely loved y'all too, especially Morgan. <laughs> Thank you for giving those of us with non-ideal family relationships a taste of normalcy and love. You guys have been my rock. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love, I love the appreciation. That was a good spread of love. And that rounds us out. Yeah. It's perfect. 
I, I was only remembering the moments when, uh, when Taylor was born and I was in the room. And being in the room for your child is one of the most moving things ever to go through in life. Especially with Jerry talking in the background. Yeah. Well, I, I was actually... <laughs> he was trying to record everything. He I, put the I, video camera up my mom's vagina. I was, supposed to be, <laughs> I was supposed to be recording childbirth. And I was so amazed what was going on. The camera was like this. And of course, I missed everything. And of course, I got yelled at. <laughs> Get the camera back where it's supposed to go. Honestly, no one wants to watch that. No, when would you ever pull that back up? I no no I had a thing? It, I had it the used to be, yeah. I had the camera everywhere but where she wanted it. No, but people did used to record their births. Oh, they did. But well, I'd yeah. want to record it just like as a female, like out just to out of curiosity, just to see. No, but, well, you can record mine. But I don't think that's like a hey guys, we're gonna sit down and watch. No, I think she really wanted to do it for herself. Yeah, okay. That was. makes sense. But I me. but I missed it. I mean, I was so <laughs> It's okay, Jerry. Anyways, back to this. Thank it was it, was, it so was a great much. moment. It yeah. was the best. Taylor and his little, you know, they used that, you know, that device that kind of pulled on his head and he had like this, he was a cone head. <laughs> I fell in love with that kid right at that moment. <laughs> I Those did. are dangerous. I, I can't believe that, that, but the doctors swear there's nothing wrong with that, that they're fine. No, they're, they're not good. Uh, they're like that? Good. Oh no! I mean, he he was a conehead. More than that? Oh God, yeah. He he looked like he just came off Saturday Night Live. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right, you gotta send us off. Yeah. Jerry. Thank you so much for the kind words, and thank you everyone for guys, tuning I, in each week. I hope that you guys love this episode as much as I love doing it because it was fun. That was good. And uh, yeah, and you can use your minds and let your mind boggle on what was coming, what, what the vision was in <laughs> oh, my yeah. head, and what I was about to say, but. I guess we don't have to go there. Oh, uh, we all got it. <laughs> Did you really? Good. Yeah. <laughs> and on that note, we will see you on Patreon and we'll see you next week. Are we doing a Patreon? Oh, We're yeah. We're doing oh, a couple. Oh, well, yeah. Well, definitely come jump on in. Come on back. Bye. 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 Bye.